We have said before on this channel that the Gibson Songwriter does not get its due when it is often overshadowed by more legacy models like the Hummingbird, the J45, the Dove, etc. Um, I want to take a deeper look into the Songwriter EC. This is a guitar that I don't believe we've talked a ton about on the channel. I think it's a fantastic choice for people that are out there gigging, for songwriters as the name suggests. So stick around, I'll tell you all about it. How's it going, y'all? This is Cooper Greenberg here at Alamo Music Center in San Antonio, Texas. You can find us online at alamomusic.com if you haven't already subscribed to the channel. Turn your notifications on so you know what's coming and when it's coming, and uh, comment below, let us know what you think. So like I said, I'm gonna be talking about the Songwriter EC today. This is the Gibson Songwriter Standard EC. They're changing model names all the time, and there's the original collection, that houses all of the classics, the 50s J45, the 60s J45, Hummingbird, um, all that stuff, SJ200, original. That's the place for all of the old school stuff that everybody thinks of when they think Gibson Acoustics. Then there's the modern collection. You've got all of those guitars that I just mentioned that are interpreted in different ways, a little more modern, being the J45 standard, the Hummingbird standard, um, SJ200 Studio Rosewood, all that stuff. But the proprietary model that I kind of associate with the modern collection would be the Songwriter, because it was introduced in 2003, um, whereas a lot of those date back to early 20th century. They've been doing them that way forever. And one thing, I mean, there's a lot about this guitar that kind of goes against the Gibson tradition, um, but the main thing for me is why it's called the Songwriter. Um, it is a rosewood back and sides guitar versus the mahogany or maple that we kind of often associate with those classic models. And we've talked about this before on the channel, but the rosewood is really there to lend a scooped area for vocals to go right in between. So rosewood has a ton of lows, tons of highs, not a ton of mid-range, like something of the mahogany ilk would have. Um, so you're mid-range is coming from your vocals, so this is ideally the singer-songwriter guitar. Um, when we've talked about it before on the channel, it has not been the EC version, E being electronics and C being cutaway. And with those two things added to the sort of format of being a songwriter-centric guitar, um, adding electronics, adding a cutaway, this is truly kind of catering towards the gigging musician, the person that needs to perform, have it ready to go on stage. And I think it does a great job of that. This is a spruce top with a rosewood burst. The uh, model is also offered with a natural top. But it's got East Indian rosewood back and sides, nice little back strip on there, sort of reminiscent of the Martin Style 28, which I dig. It's got a nice cutaway. Um, rosewood fingerboard, this is a 25.5 inch scale length. It's got some Grovers on there, which gotta have a little Grover action. Um, rosewood bridge. The pickup system on here I think is worth talking about because this is the Fishman Prefix Plus T. The T being that it has a tuner in it. But I think we are going in a sort of direction, or a lot of different manufacturers are going this direction, that less is more with pickup systems. And I generally agree with that. Um, I like something that's hidden on the inside of the sound hole. Um, this is an undersaddle pickup. This is not like an LR bag style with blending and all that. Um, but Something should be said about the fact that with something like this that's kind of rib mounted, um, you have several bands of EQ, you have a brilliance, uh, you got this contour frequency, you got a notch filter, and a phase switch, which a lot of uh, performers understand that sometimes, depending on what system you're on, um, you know, you do need to make those changes. And there is something to be said about having all those controls here. I think it's a nice thing to have if you're going to be you know, on the road with this guitar all the time. Get to know the pickup system, the preamp system, and really be able to dial in the tone that you want at all times. So nice pickup system, not the you know, three knob ES2 or the inside of the sound hole LR bags or anything like that, but um, there is a place for all those kind of systems. This one I think is truly catered towards somebody that needs to 
have one guitar for everything, you need to be able to dial in the tone. So it's there for you and it is solid. I am gonna be playing this thing just straight up through a microphone because at the end of the day, what I wanna hear is, does it stand up in terms of tone to the acoustic qualities of Gibson's classics? And I think, you know, I've played it already, pull the curtain back, we did the demo first, but there's something really interesting about this guitar that you don't find in a lot of classic Gibson acoustics. So I'm gonna let you hear it. I'm gonna talk a little bit about what I hear on the other end. Uh, so here's a little sound sample of the Gibson Songwriter Standard EC. So first off, Gibson is not afraid to make their acoustic guitars, while some are very understated, they're not afraid to go a little off the wall and put bursts on things, put a different shape of pick guard. Um, you know, they're, they're no strangers to adornments. And I think that this really straddles the line between something that would be a little too flashy for my taste, but also kind of keeps a little bit of that classic Gibson understated vibe. Um, I like the kind of interpretation of the mustache bridge that's on here. I think that's pretty cool. Um, you got one single ring of the abalone around the rosette. I think it looks nice. I would like the pit guard shape. I like the split parallelogram inlays. And just overall, I think it's a very sharp looking guitar. But the thing that stands out to me about this one is uh, you could probably hear it in the demo. You could probably assume what I'm going to say. The J45, the Hummingbird, they are probably my favorite Gibson acoustics. If I were to pick one, I would pick one of those amazing custom shop banner J45s that I'm in love with. But there is a very lo-fi, old school, uh, toned down, almost muddy quality to that guitar that you know, some players really accentuate it, make it sound great. A lot of lead bluegrass workhorse guys make the J45 pop, but there's an inher inherent quality of Gibson Acoustics to me that is that sound. This is totally opposite direction. It has a very bright, tons of note separation, no muddiness at all. I think it is a perfect example of what a Spruce and Rosewood Dreadnought sounds like because there's volume coming out of this thing for days. There's low end, there's high end, but it's like this super clean mid-range scoop that gives a sound out of this guitar that I don't really hear often in plenty of other Gibsons. Because on the other end, you got those mahogany back and sides that I spoke about. Other end, you got Doves and SJ200s with Maple, and that is another completely different tone than Rosewood. Um, yes, it is bright, but it's kind of sort of balanced everywhere else with just a little, in, in my mind at least, a little bright clarity on the top end. This is like the quintessential Rosewood sound to me that I think could go toe to toe against stuff like D28s, um, HD 28s, HD 35s, all that. This is way more akin to that tone. So for somebody that's looking for a Gibson, wants the name Gibson on the headstock, but you're a singer, maybe a solo artist, 
um, or you're playing a lot of leads, you need it to come across very bright and just you know pop off in a different way than mid-range cuts through the mix. This is like this is a lead sounding guitar to me, and uh, it also accompanies a voice great. Obviously, I'm not singing for you, but um, take my word for it. And if you can come into a store and play one, if you can watch some videos of you know singer songwriters performing with these, it's a very very balanced tone when put into a setting like that. So I think, yes, they are overlooked. We compared it to a uh, Hummingbird in a previous video where it was the non-EC version. But having the cutaway there, having a nice preamp system, um, it really makes this thing road ready, show ready. And I cannot vouch for it enough. It's overlooked and you should dig into it a little bit more. Um, so if you want to learn more about the specs, everything line by line with your nut width, and all the extra stuff that's going on that I know everybody wants to hear, you can find that info on alamomusic.com. And please ask us questions, give us a call, chat with us online, send us an email, put comments below. I would love to answer any questions you got on this guitar. I believe we've got some of the natural top ones as well, so if the Rosewood Burst isn't your thing, check out the natural. Um, it's a very sharp look as well. But uh, until next time, Thank you very much for watching, and we will see you with more cool gifts and stuff that I know is coming out this year very soon. So stick around for that, and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.